What's going on guys, it's Noah here with Custom RC Mods. Welcome back to part two of the Flight Test Scratch Build Beginner Series where we've been building this FT Simple Cub and we're gonna take it out for a flight today in this video. But first, I'm gonna talk about some build notes, final things that I wanna look back on after building this plane to give you guys some more advice if you guys are building along at home as well as we're gonna be setting this thing up to have good success on the Maiden. I'm gonna give you guys some general tips that I learned the hard way when I was first maidening my planes. So yeah, I also gave a lot of my good advice in the first episode of this series, which I'll have linked down below um, if you guys wanna check that out. And I gave some more build notes that I will not be going through again in this video. So let's go ahead, pick up right where we left off. And as you can see, I finished the plane up off camera, but one main thing that I did was added the landing gear. And you guys can see it doesn't have the wheel fairings or anything special on it. Um, and that's because I decided to leave those off for durability purposes. Now I learned very, very quickly on the FT Bushwhacker uh, that the wheel fairings are only gonna get in the way in the long run. Uh, one thing about them is that they get really uh, scrunched up and they really don't have that much structural support after you slam it into the ground one or two times and they just look like an eyesore in general. So this will make it a lot more flexible and durable for the long term and it also preserves the ability for you to take this out and switch it out for like floats or something like that. And yeah, it was a pretty easy process all along. My landing gear is a little bit janky from uh, using it on my FD Scout that has a simpler, similar uh, platform to it and my wheels are a little bit old and uh, stripped out so there's a lot of play in them but other than that I think the landing gear is going to work well and I really don't have any complaints other than that but if you guys are a beginner and you're looking for durability I would definitely recommend skipping the wheel fairings or the um, wheel landing gear fairings on there so that uh, you have maximum flexibility and durability in general. Now let's talk about some other things that I added on uh, off camera. I added on my final servos and linkages and if you guys are scratch building at home it's kind of hard to find really long push rods. So what you can see um, what I did here is I took my servos and my servos I mounted way under the elevator back at the tail so I'm just basically using paper clips or what I ha whatever, whatever I had lying around uh, to fix this plane up and get it nice and flying. That's gonna eliminate flex in your push rods and give you more direct servo control. However, you're going to need to buy more servo extensions, obviously, because your servo is farther away from the receiver. But I definitely recommend doing that. However, it will uh, play with your CG a little bit, uh, so you will have to adjust that. But since I'm running a little bit of a bigger battery in here, uh, we're not gonna have that many issues in the long run. So yeah, if you have any questions about servos and linkages, I know that's kind of looked over um, in some of flight test material. Uh, go ahead, comment down below, as well as if you just have any questions in general about um, any of the material that we're covering today, I'd be happy to help you out. Now, as you can see, this plane is a four channel uh, design here. So I went ahead and added the ailerons, and I would recommend that you guys do the same if you're a beginner. And my reasoning for that is that the bank and yank uh, flying system is really essential to have um, in your muscle memory when you're flying. Most of my planes here, like the FT Vigan, the Arrow, or the Bloody Baron, are pretty much all bank and yank. So uh, once you get that down, you can pretty much fly anything that you want. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that was really helpful for me, and I'd recommend adding the ailerons. Even if you don't use them, you can go ahead and program them program them out, um, but it's a nice thing just to proof, future proof your plane. So you can see I've got my ailerons, I've got my elevator, I've got my rudder, and I've got my throttle of course down here. So yeah, one thing that I can really recommend in terms of setup for your plane is to always have really low rates. Now if you guys uh, wanna watch my first ever flight, I have that posted on uh, my YouTube channel, but you'll see right here, this is it. And basically the fatal mistake that I made before this thing's I crashed into the ground was that my rates were way too high. I had so much deflection on my control surfaces that I overcorrected for my mistakes when I was turning and things like that. So I ended up just going back and forth, back and forth from uh, one side to the other and I never really had wings level and before I just, like you can see right there, I just smashed it right into the ground. Uh, so yeah, that was less than optimal and the way to avoid that is just have a little bit less deflection on your control surfaces. When you're first starting out, you're not gonna be doing anything crazy in terms of maneuvers or loops and rolls. You just wanna get the plane up and down safely. So yeah, lower uh, your rates and once you get more comfortable, you can up them until uh, you get more fine-tuned in your muscle memory and stick handling. So yeah, with that, let's go ahead and move on just to a few other little notes um, in terms of durability. You can see that I've added this aluminum tape up top on the wing system right here, and that is going to help with these rubber bands that you can see that are holding the wing on. Uh, usually the rubber bands will dig into the foam 
and overall that's just not a good thing uh, to have happening because then that's going to take away from the structure of your wings. So I definitely recommend, especially if you're looking from a beginner standpoint and you want something that's going to be durable, this is where gonna, a lot of your blows are going to happen when you hit into the ground like that. You want to make sure that your wing doesn't get eaten up by these rubber bands uh, when you're flying along. Anyway, let's go ahead and just go through a few more little things that will help you find success on your first uh, flight. Make sure that you have your landing gear installed. Uh, that is a really essential thing when you're having your first flight so that you don't have to hand launch it and then work your way, work your hand back to your control surfaces. So uh, that's one thing I definitely recommend uh, just so that you have more time to react once you get it up in the air. And CG is really important. You can see that I've got uh, my CG pretty much set where it should be uh, right about um, right about on the first uh, spar line. So that's where you want it on this plane, but make sure you watch the build video for more um, in, more notes on that from Josh, of course. He actually designed this plane, so he's going to be able to tell you exactly what you want to do. But do not overlook CG, because that is going to be what brings your plane down in the end. Um, and always favor on the nose heavy side. I think that's pretty heavily pushed inside of the flight test ecosystem that a nose heavy plane will fly poorly but a tail heavy plane will only fly once. So yeah with that said I think we're pretty much good to go. I gotta get a prop on here um, but that's everything we have to do for the Maiden. If you guys use a little bit of common sense and head knowledge um, from these videos and from flight test videos in general just educate yourself on how the control surfaces work. You're gonna have a pretty successful Maiden and I'm confidently um, here to tell you that. So yeah let's go ahead and head out to the park for a Maiden. All right, so we're out here at the park. As you can see, it's a little bit of a windy day. You can probably hear it, um, but we're gonna be flying the Scout nonetheless, and it's okay to have a little wind. It's actually good to help you get into the air. But the one thing you wanna note is that if it moves your plane off the ground, like you can see how it's kind of moving around, but if it starts to wheel your plane back downwind, that's when I'd normally call it quits. Or even before that, like right about now is kind of borderline uh, bad for your first flight. But if there is a little wind, it's not gonna hurt anything. Just make sure you launch into the wind. You can see I've got my control services set up, Elevon, rudder, and my throttle. So let's go ahead and just get this thing right in the air. And we are up in the air. You just want to get comfortable with the plane that you're flying. So before you do anything crazy, just, just make sure that you know what you're doing. And this is a little bit underpowered. I can already feel it for this uh, for this day um, just because of the amount of wind. And it's kind of all over the place. That's one thing that high wing airplanes tend to be bad at, especially if this is a four channel. Um, but it is flying, it is up and in the air, so I'm not really too worried about it. Just make sure you get your plane up and high so you have plenty of time to respond um, just in case. And you can see I'm flying extra high today just because I'm not overly comfortable with its aircraft yet. This is my very first flight on this plane. Um, so I'm really excited that it's up in the air, but I'm also going to stay reserved in what I'm doing. So don't dive for the loops and rolls. Uh, just go ahead and know your airplane, get kind of knowing of what you're doing and how it's going to fly, how it's going to react when you turn down wind. If you're flying um, a plane like this right here, you're going to notice that it's going to fly a lot faster downwind. You're not going to be struggling to get upwind like um, when you're flying downwind, if that makes sense. So, so just be ready to turn back around and you can see that I have a deathly large amount of aileron trim that I need on this plane. So. We're just gonna keep flying around till we can get this totally trimmed out. And it's it's a lot to work with. So this is my first maiden of this plane and you can see it's not flying great, um, but it is flying nonetheless and it's going to fly. Uh, so that's what you gotta know is that it's not gonna be pretty the first time, especially if you're just brand new to this. Um, but what you wanna do is just make sure that you uh, get everything all handled so that you can have better flights and you don't crash on this flight. So I just recommend go way up to the highest you can go and still keep orientation and kind of work from there. You can see it's directly above me, which doesn't help, but I'm soaring up with this bird up there. I think it's a hawk, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. But you can see we're just soaring around up here. No need to go fast, no need to punch the throttle. Just, just learn what your airplane does. All right, so we just got back from the Maiden of the FT Simple Cub, and as you saw, I was not able to get the landing on film before my GoPro died, which is unfortunate, but I'm gonna give you some landing tips right now. And my first one is just to own your landings. They're not gonna be perfect, so don't try to make a perfect approach just for show 
on your first time around. Take it nice, low and slow, and whatever happens, happens. Don't do too many go arounds, just get it on the ground. And that's my one piece of advice when it comes to landings, especially for beginners. Uh, most of the time, when you second guess yourself and you try to go up again, it's gonna be a little bit too late. So make your go arounds when you're at least 20 or 30 feet off the ground. Um, but once you get in there, you kinda just have to go for your landings because once you get into ground effect, and ground effect is the length of your wingspan above the ground, because when you get lower, it compresses the air between your wing and the ground, and that's gonna give you some different tendencies and less stability um, when that compressed air is trying to find a way out. Uh, so ground effect is gonna make your plane uh, fly a little bit differently. So if you aren't just owning your landing right there and trying to punch, instead trying to punch out, when you try to punch out, it's gonna probably lose lift in one of the wings and you could crash it into the ground or you could just you know nose dive it straight into the ground. Wing strikes and prop strikes are not ideal of course, especially also if you get your wheels on the ground and you try to punch out of it, you might just go ahead and nose it over into the ground and that's unnecessary, not needed. Um, so just what I'm saying is just own your landings and it will be a lot better. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time around. Nobody's expecting you to be a perfect lander as a beginner. Anyway, let's talk about a little bit of the tendencies of this aircraft. You guys saw that it was a windy maiden. So I would not recommend the simple cub for a windy maiden. I've done uh, the maidens in a breeze for my scout. Um, and the Scout flies a little bit better um, just because it is a mid-wing plane. The controls are a little bit more um, axial as it's right on the center of gravity and lift. Uh, however, the wings are above the center of gravity here, so that makes it a little bit less stable, um, as well as the fact that this fuselage is so tall compared to other airplanes makes it not handle the wind so well because it just gets blown around. So if you're doing a crosswind pass, the wind's gonna be coming this way and eating into your fuselage and shaking it all around, which is not ideal if you can avoid it. Anyway, uh, I just want to tell you guys that the Maiden is really not supposed to be completely perfect or beautiful in any way. You guys saw me struggling around to get control of this Cub. Um, that's because my ailerons have pretty high rates and I was trying to get them trimmed out. But once you get them trimmed out, it should be pretty straightforward to get this plane up and down pretty flawlessly. So I'd recommend uh, just kind of work with your plane, put two or three flights in it before you know you start to realize the actual tendencies of the airplane. Because the CG, when you shift it around, you can feel, you'll feel it if it's a little bit tail heavy, you won't be able to go as fast and keep the nose down as much, as well as nose heaviness, you won't be able to have as much elevator authority. Um, you'll feel that and you can make adjustments and always come back to it again. So don't give up on your first maiden, keep trying to find the plane's true tendencies. Other than that, that's pretty much it. All I have to say about flying your simple cub here as we built in this series. I hope you guys enjoyed the series. Hope it made scratch building a little bit more straightforward. If you have any questions, I'll be hanging out in the comment section below, answering them all day. So make sure to comment down below if you guys have any questions, or I can also make videos if you guys want me to go into a little bit more detail on how to uh, do a specific part of this process. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Thank you guys for all the love that you've given me, especially on this Scratch Build Beginner Series, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.